So today we're going to be taking a look at something very unique called the Linksware Typewriter or Linksware Cat. There's kind of different naming depending on what you get here, which we'll discuss later in the video. But I think the best way to show this to you is to just dive in and take a look. So this here is the Linksware Typewriter. Both halves together is known as a typewriter. Each half individually is known as a cat. Now I'm not sure what cat stands for. I'm assuming it's an acronym of some sort. If I find out what it means before releasing this video, I'll pop it up on the screen now. But each half is a cat. Whole thing together is a typewriter. Now typewriter is denoting that this is the configuration I got because if we look, we have a section here. This is a module up top. The thumb cluster here is another module. We have a module here and then a module here. So typewriter is meaning that the modules I got is the typewriter configuration. There are different modules. You can get like a thumbstick on this one, which we'll look at later on the different configurations, but you kind of will sit on the board like this. So if I hold up my left hand here, you have these indexing keys here where you put your three fingers and then the pinky column is staggered down one row. So it's kind of a little bit lower for ergonomics. But you'll sit on that half like that. And then the same thing over here, you'll have those three keys there with the indexing key there where you'll sit like this yet again, and you'll kind of use it like this. And you can see that this left half doesn't actually move, but this right half does move. And the reason for that is very, very cool because if we flip over this right half, you can see that there is a mouse module right there. So we have these slippery feet underneath for the mousing action of this one. So basically I have my left click, middle click, right click right here, and then I can use this as a mouse. Now, the one thing I don't like and wish I did do, which I'll talk about later when we look at the configurations, is I wish I didn't get the encoder and instead just got these buttons over on this half. So the encoder here, because you can see that I'm missing the three buttons there, meaning that I'm missing three keys for my Colmac layout. So it makes it really hard to type. It would have been nicer to get that module in here, which is actually a good thing with this. So because on their website, it has a thing that says you can swap any of the modules out if you want to. I'm not sure how that process works. If you have to pay for return shipping or if they pay for it, or if it's factored into the cost, but they do mention you can switch these modules out, which is very nice. You can do that. And that brings me to my next point. If I flip this one over that we can see it has a very nice textured bottom. I'm assuming this is a bamboo labs printer just based on that texture there. But underneath here, it has this spring, which indicates the first thing about this board. That's really, really cool is that it's completely screwless. So there are no screws in the construction of this at all. So every single part here is just kind of snap fit. And if we pop this open, you can see it's a print in place spring. We can kind of pull that, which is a little bit hard to do sometimes, but you pop it open. You see it's a little bit robust. It's a very good design there that I don't think will wear out easily. But then we can kind of pop this open and start to get inside of this and pull this out gently. And you can see that there's a lot of wires in there. But if we look inside, you have your modules here, which I believe you can just push out and pop it out. But I'm not going to do that because I don't want to risk breaking it right now. But we have all these connectors here. So there's no solder on anything. And that's so you can swap these modules out. So if you wanted to say put a different module up top here, you just find the wires for that one, pop them out, pop the new module out, which on their website, they have nice diagrams of all this. So there's not like a lot of guesswork. You can kind of figure out where they go because it shows you very clearly, but I'm just going to take this and pop it back in now and you'll see it just kind of goes in that twist. And I don't think I mentioned, but that is a gyroscope under there. So this half actually has a gyroscope. So if you move it like that, it will do certain things. It doesn't really do much right now in the software, but it does have that functionality. And then of course, up top, we have a USB-C port. And then on the right half, we also have a USB-C port up there, which they do require two separate ports. So you have to take two cables for it, but they do function as one board. So if you hold shift on this board over here, it'll function over here. And the same thing, if you hold shift here, it will act as shift over here. Some boards don't do that when you have two cables. So it's nice that that actually works. Now at this point, you've obviously noticed that this is an ergonomic keyboard. So you sit on it like this and your wrist will kind of be at a good ulnar deviation. So you won't be twisting your wrist too much. You'll be able to work it like that. But obviously we have this section here that's not supported. So you can see there's that little hole there, which they kind of did try to solve this with these additional pieces that it comes with. So each half comes with three sizes, a small, medium, and a large. Then we also have the same for the left half here, a small, medium, and large. The difference being that the mouse half has the slidey feet underneath, and then the keyboard half has the sticky feet underneath. And you see that it is completely screwless still. So it uses like these tabs, which is kind of a concern of mine because these tabs here are very thin. I think this should have been a screw in part, but you can basically take that and it'll just kind of slot into here. And you can see that every time I do this, I feel like I'm going to break it because they're so thin. So and it's also kind of hard to get in there, but that will just kind of pop in there like that. So you'll get a little bit of support on your wrist. And then the same thing on this right half, I'll put the large one on here with the mouse feet, but just take that and pop it on there. And the theory is that these should support your wrist a little bit, which I don't know. Is that fully in now? Yeah, there we go. So the theory is that they should f support your wrist right there, right? But 
for my wrist, it kind of just doesn't sit right. You can see it doesn't really support it as much as I like, which brings me to the topic about ergonomics is that I, I like to use the AirPods as an example because what Apple did with those, is they kind of sampled a large amount of people to kind of get the average size of ear for what would fit with those. Same theory with like ergonomic stuff is that you can only sample such a wide audience of people and they kind of have to account for that, which something they mentioned on their website is they're trying to work on better ergonomics down the road. But for me, these wrist things kind of don't fit the best. I don't find them super, super comfortable. So I often just end up popping them out and not using them. So if we try to pull this out here, this is what I meant about the tabs is that it just feels like, yeah, it feels like right there that I was about to break it, but it did pop out. So I just often use them without the things there and just pop these off and just kind of use it like this. So what I'd like to do now is take a look on their website at some of the configurations you can actually get because if I haven't mentioned, this board is fully open source or you can buy a fully assembled one from them or just get the parts to build your own because you can get the files on their website, you can get the PCBs, all that stuff. So we're gonna take a look at that now and then we'll look at the firmware a little bit later because it's a little bit weird, but it's kind of very special for this because it's a board like this does need its own custom firmware, which we'll talk about later. But uh, yeah, let's take a look at the website and we'll kind of go from there. So right now we're on my computer, I'm moving my mouse with the actual board here so you can see the left half is this I have my left click I have my middle click so I can kind of close this and then open up a new one and then I also have my right click on this upper button so I can right click but what we're gonna do is attempt to go to linkswear.org so I'm gonna type on here links uh, where and then dot it's very hard to type on this but org and then I have enter up on this thumb button so I'll press enter and then it will bring us to their website right here. So what I can do now is just kind of scroll down and you can kind of get an idea of the modular system. I'm gonna turn off my plugin here for dark mode so you can actually read this. But you can see that we have some different configurations here. You have like the joystick on the left half, which would be a cool one. They have videos on their channel, which I'll also link in the description. They kind of show like gaming with it. So you could use this joystick here as a like WSD, and then you can use your mouse on your right hand as usual. But we have all these different options here. They show their like interchangeable supports and stuff. Um, this is the program that we'll look at later in the video for configuring everything, which is a little bit weird. It's a little bit confusing to use and not everything's in it that I'd like to see yet. But there's a lot of stuff on here. But if we go up to the top and then go to the DIY tab, so if we click that, it'll bring us to their DIY thing. This is released under an, a Creative Commons license, attribution non-commercial, so you can kind of print these and do what you need to with it. And I believe you can share it under that. If you do stuff, you just can't make money with it if you wanted to build one yourself or share the files. But if we scroll down, you can see we have our components video. They have all these videos on their channel, um, just kind of showing everything you need to do. Very well documented. We'll keep scrolling down here. And you can see you have all your files here, so you can get your control boards here you can get all your wires on um, this is just an aliexpress control board it is an esp32 so you can see esp32 um, so each control is about eight bucks in each half but then you have all your pcbs for your different files so if we go to the finger module left which the finger module is just this one right here so we have the schematic for it we have the pcb file and you can just use this stuff to order them yourself if you wanted to but we'll close these down and keep scrolling down here then you have your joystick module if you want to do a joystick on the left half. And I don't know if it also, it does have a joystick module for the right half right here. So you can do that or you can get the mouse module underneath, which remember that is the mouse module right there. And then of course the gyroscope module, which is hidden inside here. So we'll keep scrolling down here on the right half. And then we finally come to this, which are the STL files. So we can open this and you can see that we have basically every single file to print this if you wanted to print it yourself, which I did actually end up doing something for this. I ended up printing these here. I printed all the buttons because I thought it'd be cool to kind of replace them. I haven't done that yet, but you can pop those out and replace them if you wanted to with the buttons. So you have all the files here if you wanted to print it yourself. You can download them and do it. The one thing I would like to see though is I would like to see like step files. I'm sure there's a reason they're not releasing those because then you kind of have like all the files you need to kind of clone this thing if you wanted to. But having the step files make it so I could custom design those supports so my wrists would be supported a little bit better. So it'd be nice to have those. But if we scroll up here, what I want to look at on these files is actually the design itself because it's designed to be printed completely without support. So we pop this in the 3D viewer here. You can see that it prints at this angle where it basically won't need supports to print. So it'll kind of print at like a 45 degree or so and it won't require any support. So that's really nice that they kept that in mind also. If we pop back over here, we can keep scrolling down. They kind of get some recommendations for settings on this to print stuff. The keys are 0.12 and then the layer height for the rest of it's 0.2. I printed everything at 0.2 on the uh, keycaps here and they look kind of fine. So I don't imagine there'd be a problem. But we'll scroll down again. You have an assembly here, which it kind of shows all the schematics and like where everything goes. So all the pins here, like I mentioned earlier, if you want to swap out the modules, it's very well documented 
recommended if you wanted to build one yourself. So all the information is right on this site to build one yourself, which is really nice to see. And then it is, of course, built with an open source firmware. So it is called the, uh, it's written in Platformio. Um, the guy is in Germany, so he has some typos. Um, he's based in Germany. Shipping took about two weeks for this too to get to me. So it's built with an ESP32. I would have liked to see it on QMK, but something like this you can't really put on QMK because of all the features they're trying to do, which if we actually go back up here, that reminds me that if we go to the top and go home, you can see if we scroll down, they kind of have a goal for this where they want to have like their cat system here. So they have their cats here. They have their eye tracker eventually they want to do microphone pedals. They want to kind of get like this whole system of like inputs for your computer to like work with a bunch of stuff. And this is kind of the first theory there is the cats right here. But if we go back to the DIY tab and then scroll back down and then we of course have the assembly. So you kind of see this video here will show you how to assemble everything. The next thing on here that I want to show is if you go to the shop, we can talk about pricing and how to actually get one yourself. So we have, of course, let me uh, disable my plugin yet again here. What we have here are the typewriter. So this is the one I got. It's the typewriter, which is $310, which the pricing on this, I think, is kind of steep for the fully assembled ones. I will say that 310 is pretty expensive. So that's what this one goes for. And it does say module can be exchanged if you want to exchange those. But we'll go back here. You have different ones, like if you want to get the joystick and mouse on the left half, you can kind of get that joystick, which would be pretty cool to use um, for gaming, which I do have videos on their channel. I'll link it down again down below. We'll go back here. And then we will scroll back down. And this is what I think is more important on their website are these kits here. So say for the one I got here, the typewriter, it's $164 for the parts kit, which I think is very fairly priced considering that each one of these PCBs is a different assembled part. So getting all these parts yourself, if you wanted to build it yourself or order the PCBs yourself would be a lot more than $164 getting all this stuff. So I think this is the route to go if you are going to build one of these or if you want one of these is to get the kit from them and then kind of build it yourself and print all the stuff out. Um, you can also get the joystick one if you want to just do one half so 125 for just one half if you wanted a joystick on either the right or the left hand and yeah that's kind of what you can get on their site you can either get part kits for the diy version or get fully assembled ones this one here is the one that i wish i did get the typewriter split keyboard with the without the encoder because i'm pretty sure i mentioned it but this encoder here i'm missing keys so i don't have those three keys i need here whereas if i got this one i'd be able to actually use a full colmac layout because i think this is meant to be used with like their layout so they have like their they call it their n-gram so if we scroll down the default layout is like this n-gram thing here which has like a, a very weird layout but what i'd like to look at next is actually take a look at the firmware and kind of how that works so we'll jump into that and take a look so this here is the firmware you'll get there's a bunch of settings in it like themes so you can change the overall theme of it which i don't really mess around with i just kind of messed around with this it was kind of confusing i did a stream on this yesterday at least yesterday my time learning this software without like looking at their tutorials was kind of rough but i did eventually figure it out you kind of click your keys you get all these options here and then you can kind of bind your stuff you click save and it kind of binds in there and then you hit the update button but on the left here what we have is the gyro which i briefly talked about earlier but i hold this right half here you can kind of see that if i move this to the right the mouse moves to the right and if i move this to the left it moves to the left if I push it down, it moves up and then that way it moves down. So it is kind of reversed, but that's kind of how that works on the right here. We have our mouse configuration, which is cool on this though, that you have a vertical and a horizontal. So you can kind of change those. So if I slide my horizontal down to like 80, you can see now with my mouse that it's, it's very slow left to right, but then up to down is very fast. So let me switch that back now, but we'll kind of put that back to 130. Like I like it. We will click update and then that should. Let that go back to what I wanted. Right here, you're seeing an issue that I don't like with the software. Right now, I have to pick up my other mouse because sometimes the software will bug out and you'll have to close it down. And I don't know if this is Windows or if it's the software, but you have to close it down. You unplug the board and then plug it back in and then you will get your stuff back and it will start functioning again. I don't know if it's a software or if it is actually Windows doing that because on my stream yesterday, I was having a lot of issues with Windows just disconnecting in general from all my USB devices. So I don't think it was necessarily the board. Just something to keep in mind with the software is that it seems a little bit buggy at times. But yeah, you can kind of come in here and change whatever you need to. We have our encoder here. So you can see I have J, H, and K for my layout on that because I don't have those keys. Like I said, it'd be very nice if I did have those extra keys there because right now, if I scroll up, I'll get J. If I scroll down, I'll get K and pressing it in, I'll get H. So I can't really like fully type on this thing right now, which is a little bit annoying, but um, it's not like it's a problem from them. It's a problem for me that I ordered this one. This is the one I requested from them instead of the one with the buttons there. This is kind of meant to use anyway with this Lynx Ngram. So this is kind of their layout. You can see like BCG like all these different layouts on each side so it's not a standard like cordy or colmac layout it's kind of their own custom things but i set it up to work as colmac is the unbound a there so let me uh, put a back 
See, quick and simple, you can put stuff back. But this is my main layout here. I have my Colmax, so I have A, R, S, T, D, just like that. What I'd like to do now is try to do a typing test on this. I have a thing set up a monkey type where I don't actually have the H, J, and K keys on here so I can exclude those letters and actually type on it. But that does bring something up I did want to talk about though is that these keys inside of it are actually mouse keys and sometimes they can get a little bit stuck on the keycaps here. So it's not like the biggest deal but sometimes they will get a little bit stuck which is not the greatest feeling when you're trying to type but overall they work pretty good and I think I did mention too that they are FDM printed. I'm very happy when I saw that because when I ordered it I thought that these would end up being like resin keycaps which I've talked about a lot in the past that resin keycaps can cause issues with biocompatibility so there's that question there. But these are just FDM DM in either PLA or PET G, so they're perfectly safe to type on, which I was very happy to see. What we're gonna do now is just go do a typing test, kind of try to type on it. We'll see if I can get more than like 10 or 15 words per minute, and we'll go from there. So yeah, that is the Linksware typewriter slash cat. Remember cat is each module and then the whole thing is the typewriter. I think it's a very cool and very promising board, especially what they have planned. You know, the stuff with the eye tracking, possibly trackball modules, pedals, all that stuff that they wanna do. I think it's a really promising product that has a bright potential in the future. As of right now, it is a little bit extreme for my usage. I do wish that I didn't get that encoder and instead got the three buttons here because that would have made it so much better to work with. I figured the encoder would be cool. I thought it looked cool, which it does look cool, but missing those three buttons, I'm kind of stuck not being able to type Colmac on it. So they do intend for you to kind of use the layout anyway. So that's kind of why that's not a big deal, I guess, in their mind. But for me, that is a big deal not having that module. I wish I just got the mirrored version. Now they did also want me to mention that if you do like this project and want to kind of work with them on it, they're looking for like contributors. They're looking for people to maybe purchase the product and kind of expand it out, partner with stuff like that. With that said, this is the entire thing here. I think it works really good. I did get 30 words per minute, which I was very impressed with. And I do think if I had those buttons, I'd be able to get a lot faster. So a little bit disappointing on my part that I was like, ooh, shiny encoder and not thinking that, hey, maybe I need buttons there. But yeah, that's what I got. So I think it's a very cool board. I don't really have much else to say here. Uh, I'll link up down in the description if you want to check it out. As usual, comment, rate, subscribe. Let me know what you think of this, and I will see you next time.